Converting photos or videos to 3D models using photogrammetry applications was possible on the Intel Max using free software like Meshroom or Reality Capture, but there was one caveat, you had to have an Nvidia graphics card. Since Apple introduced the M1 Max and so the new architecture, you couldn't use those programs anymore because these computers don't support additional GPUs anymore. But since macOS 10 Monterey, Apple introduced a new feature that they call Object Capture API, and that makes it possible to do photogrammetry on Macs for free. Shortly after, there was already the first app available in the App Store that utilizes this functionality and makes that super easy and straightforward to use, and that's called PhotoCatch. By today, there is already a bunch of apps available, but they essentially all do the same thing, so let's have a look at PhotoCatch. In PhotoCatch, we can choose whether we like to use either photos or a single video as an input. There's also a multimedia option where you can combine multiple photos and videos into one single project and many more features, but those additional features aren't free essentially because they are not part of Apple's API. My opinion is you don't need the paid features. It's totally working fine with the free functionality unless you have a professional reason where you need more control. So let's start with photos. I have a folder with images here on my desktop that I've taken a while back. Some of you might remember the lion statue. That scan has 47 images, a pretty scrappy approach, not putting in much effort. They've been taken with a Pixel 3 XL that's super old so no fancy equipment here. I'll select that folder here in PhotoCatch. Essentially, all you normally do is just hit Create Model. However, you could customize the level of detail here and a few more things in the advanced settings, but normally it works fine already by just selecting a level of detail. That is mostly influencing how much time, so computing effort, the program will put into calculating the final result. And there's going to be difference in the model detail depending on that selection. So after, in this case, about three minutes later, we get the 3D object with textures and the icing on the cake, it's already cropped down to the very thing that we want. I'm saying this because in programs like Meshroom, Reality Capture and others, you usually get a lot of things in a first version of the 3D model that you have to cut out using another program like Blender. And that's additional time to invest, things to learn, effort to put in to get the same result as this. You could use this result right away to present a product on a website or use it as an asset in a game. Probably you won't notice a big difference to something produced by Reality Capture, which is quite expensive depending on the license you buy. What I also need to mention that this feature that Apple implemented, it's blazing fast. All these apps in the App Store use this object capture API. That's where the magic happens. So for comparison to traditional photogrammetry software, Meshroom, which is a free software, took 15 minutes to produce a result that you still need to edit and crop. Reality Capture is two to three times faster than Meshroom, but it's still slower than the Apple Object Capture API. And this MacBook Air is the cheapest version you can get. My PC over here is three times more expensive and still takes longer to do this. So Apple just entered the room and made photogrammetry a commodity, just like that. Now let's give it another test using a video because a lot of you asked me in the last video about photogrammetry, can't we use video instead of photos? Yes, we can. So let's make a video of this Superman statue. I'm taking my smartphone, walking around the object and so filming it from every possible angle. So this is the video I've taken. Let's load it into PhotoCatch. Here we have to tell the software how many of the video images do we want to use. In this case, we take one image and then we're skipping 12 frames in the video. I'm marking the first frame in the sequence and then I'm moving to the end of the video, figuring which is the last frame that I want to use. In this case, I probably want to skip the last few frames as the camera wasn't pointing towards the statue anymore. So let's mark this one as the last frame. Now we're done and I click create model again. And a few minutes later, we have a nice Superman figure in 3D. How could we further process this? For example, for 3D printing or using on a website, you can export this into two different formats. The one that I'm using for 3D printing is OBJ. Every 3D printing software can open that. 
The second one is ASDZ, which is an Apple specific format used to display these files on the iPhone and iPads faster, but that format is not working with 3D construction programs or 3D printing programs. What topics should I cover in my next videos? Let me know down in the comment section and hit the like button if you like this video, it's helping me grow the channel. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.